It's a very good afternoon in South Africa. Thank you so much for joining us well, right here on SABC One as we bring you another episode of Ilungu.co. Is your right? We'll bring you all the information and all the things you need to know about your consumer rights. And of course, as an active citizen and as a curious consumer. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Well, as a clean, as a shaking up hand, like an hour in a linear type studio, the number to dial is 011-714-6918 and of course, 6919. You can go and check me on Twitter. My Twitter handle is at CP1 Zaumbi. Make sure that you hashtag Ilungu.co and of course, you give us your views. We're so interested to hear from you right here on the show. But of course, you can still send us your emails. Our email address is at, at consumer at sabc.co.za. Um, uh, we're really interested to hear from you. Well, South Africa, let's get it on and running. Good afternoon to you. <laughs> Now, the South African Constitution guarantees free education for all, but it becomes a huge difficulty for those who cannot access fees. And of course, uh, there is a huge gap between fees and education. Now, so as a result of lack of awareness and all the government uh, policies that are there about education, a lot of people tend to be set back when it comes to education and accessing quality education in South Africa. Today on Yilunga Dalaku, we're bringing you all the information you need to know about the school's fee exemption program, what it is, who benefits, who gets excluded from the program. But first, before we do that, let's have a look at this insert. Gogom Teto Miango is in Fundo Mabanga, a Pantagan, nineteen ninety six. Wenza Uguti Gubesem Tetuin, Ugut is in Gan is a tolly in Fundo. Got one Jango by Lapa Emzant in Ningi Laban to Bezit Lupegela, Ugasuela Imali, Gwenza Gubendima, Uguti Befinelli, and Fundueni and Mono. Geshwake in Ningi, Alas and Gostello Luca Hulumani left fee exemption, Kayanoguti Uban or Shumola Ugulo. Ufaranaz, very ever. Opuma Quintangano is section twenty seven. Ukolelo Uti, Kumele Guandise, Imikankaso, Equaisa Umparat, and get fee exemption. Ukuze Aban, the Beguaz, Ugutola, Izinga Lemfundo, and Semkanga Twenty. Ulanda Uguti is a Benza Ganjani. Around 2006, there was a big fee reform that introduced. There was a big funding reform that introduced uh, fee based schools and no fee schools. And in the fee-based schools, learners um, can, or parents can apply for an exemption from school fees. And this is calculated in terms of a formula. And then for the very poorest learners, there are schools that have been declared fee-free. So, and generally that is underpinned by the principle that uh, learners shouldn't be discriminated against because they are poor. Dr. Seth Mazibugo, OE Chief Operations Officer with the Moral Regeneration Movement, OE Ngum Funding is a card to go big isha about funding on Yaka 1976. Uvumelana Naples, Liga Vreva, Loguti, Gumele Gwandis is a quiet and gets fee exemption. Ngum Ted Nangangeli right. Fanelangal is Kati Umza Abazal. Bayo Aplale Colin. Nana Nana before Bayo Aplale Colin, Fanabe Conalento Lena, as a Sibona Yenza and Ade Colors of Longa Cool, Ilanga Papa Conanjusu to an open day. Lapo Abazari Menu, Utilize Colin, Secubaganj, Secubaganj, Secubaganj. Mangabes Unento in a Fanana fee exemption, nine little Cubangan. About ten by a was of taller if fee exemption, or my band to another baby fund as a colon, the Gahulumini, as a coquelayo. Ama fee exemption, a Lugani Suegani. A octala, automatic exemption. A taller is in Gan, as in Tandani, no malaba about taller in Mali, as in Gan, as Bonello Sigahulumini. A S Billy, a full exemption. You are not taller about an allowable school fee sabo, sing a pezul got ten percent, one hollow abazali babo. A is tied to a partial exemption. Oh, my school fees sing a parati got 3.5 per cent, no 10 per cent, um holo a bazali. A is sine, a conditional exemption. Lena it holo a bazali, a batola a partial exemption. Got an gang raising king as an apezu quabo, a baguazo coca lemali as a vele yes to see we. Over the ever, Ukolewa Ugudzi, if he exemption, I it holo a yilaba abiding and gempela. 
the exemption system and the failures in the exemption system are targeting the most vulnerable, which are poor parents, which are single mothers. You know, I had a case a few years ago where um, it was a single mother. She was looking after her deceased sister's children. The, the school went after her. They attached her furniture. And we had to take the case to court and basically have the judgment rescinded, meaning um, having it overturned so that uh, you know, we could show the unfairness of this and show that she should have actually be entitled to an exemption. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> Kwa the governing body foundation it inkinga baba nayo ukuthi abazali abanalo iqiniso ngemali abayiholayo nangokuthi bayasebenza yini lokhu ke kwenza kube nzima impela ukubona ukuthi ubani okumele ayithole i fee exemption futhi wenza nokuthi izikole zingabi nayo imali eyanelo ukuthi sigcine isikole sihlanzekile noma futhi silungiswe abazali bayaqwayiswa ukuthi bebuze kabanzi nge fee exemption ezikoleni eziseduzane nabo bengaze bayofundisa izingane ezikolweni ezikude unompumelelo mthethwa yilungelo lakho egoli well, thank you to our producer, Nambu Milan Tetua, for that breaking insert on this fee exemption program. And just to remind you that you can also be a part of us right in studio. The number is 011-714-6918 and, of course, 6919. And now joining me in studio to make sure that we discuss this subject in depth is a, an official from the Basic Department of uh, 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 Education, and that is Mr. James Ndlebe. Mr. Ndlebe, thank you so much for joining us. Now, we're just interested and want to know what brought about this fee exemption program. Why? Is it because maybe there's a huge gap uh, between access to education, quality education and funds, uh, what brought about it? That, that could be the case. Uh, we need to understand that the department has two types of schools, mm. the fee-paying schools and the non-fee-paying schools. In the non-fee-paying schools, that's where the department pays for everything. Parents are not expected to contribute anything unless if it's just a donation. Yeah. But there are those parents that come from affluent areas where they can afford to run education and fund it themselves. And the, 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 this is where we expect parents to contribute a fee that mm. is determined by them, uh, by the way. Mm. Uh, we, we expect school governing bodies who are representatives of the parents to guide the parents on how much the school fees is going to be mm -hmm. and how much each parent needs to yeah. contribute. And that has to be done in consultation with the parents. So in those schools where parents are expected to pay fees, you do find parents that are unable mm -hmm. to contribute. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these are parents that the, <clears throat> the government tries to protect in the sense that they have to prove that they are unable to contribute. Let's early. talk about that exactly. How do you determine that a parent cannot afford uh, what kind of things do you look at? What's the process uh, of getting into the bottom line of knowing that this particular parent cannot afford their own fees? There is a formula that the department gives to provincial departments to use. The formula is about how much the school fees is mm -hmm. and what is the income, the household income. All if right. there are both parents, one parent, and the formula will then look into the total amount payable. Mm -hmm. And from 
that it can be determined that if you are totally unemployed, you don't have an income, then you are given a total school fees exemption. Mm -hmm. And then it goes down in terms of how much then you get a certain percentage. You can get a partial exemption mm -hmm. or a total exemption. Mm -hmm. Or there could be an exemption with uh, under certain conditions. So there will be those categories. And what, what, what kind of other conditions do you look at? I do understand that, you know, uh, people who uh, have got children or perhaps are guardians to children who are orphans, uh, uh, children who are staying in orphanage uh, centers, children's, uh, children who are, are staying in centers and so forth, uh, they first uh, get first preference when it comes to, to this fund. Uh, what other factors do you look at, especially for a child who still has both parents? It's actually the household income that mm. determines that. And household income doesn't mean being fully employed somewhere else. Mm -hmm. you, you could be an entrepreneur that have in the an informal income, side of business. In the informal side mm. of business. Mm -hmm. Then it, it, it is those things that we take into consideration that in a month, uh, every month, this is how much you're earning. And then in terms of the school fees, then we then use the formula to determine yeah. whether you get a full exemption or a partial exemption mm -hmm. or, you're, uh, or you're completely exempted from this. This all school. sounds too interesting to me, but mm -hmm. my major concern is that a lot of people out there, including myself, a lot of parents uh, didn't know about this fee exemption program and how uh, you know it is executed, especially in public schools, because this is basically for government schools. Mm -hmm. uh, but what kind of schools or what kind of knowledge is put out there, uh, especially because I know that the government body is usually in the process of determining how, many, how the funds are distributed to, to, to which parent. Uh, but what kind of knowledge do you put out there as the department to ensure that you know, the parents have got the full knowledge when it comes to this program? We normally request schools to inform parents during uh, application time, mm -hmm. when they hand over applications, <clears throat> we expect them to put up a copy that explains this uh, exemption of fees and how they should apply in case they really yeah. need to be exempted. All right. Well, let's quickly go to Cape Town. We've got our other uh, studio guest who's joining us right there. That is uh, Mr. Tim Gordon, who's coming from the Government Body Foundation. Uh, Mr. Gordon, thank you so much for joining us on Yudungo Dolako this afternoon. Now, the question is about this fee exemption program. I do understand that, you know, government bodies have got a huge role when it comes to distribution of these funds and who qualifies. Now, I just want to get your role, basically, in the whole process. What is your basic role? Look, the role of the governing bodies is in fact very, very limited mm. because all that we have to do is to ensure that the rules are applied. You've been chatting now about the formula and about the regulations and about the fact that parents need to be informed of it. Mm -hmm. Once they put in an application, then the governing body simply has the role to check and see, according to the formula, whether they do qualify or not. Mm -hmm. The governing body hasn't got at that stage any sort of right to say no, they don't get as much or they get half of it. They just have to apply what the regulations and the formula say. As the Governing Body Foundation, what kind of changes would you like to see, or rather, uh, what kind of involvement would you like to have when it comes to a distribution of these funds or this program? Well, we have the rights in the fact that we do, as governing bodies, receive the applications. Mm -hmm. We have the right to explain to parents what it is all about. Mm -hmm. There is also a part of the regulation which says even if you do have an exemption, there's nothing to prevent you from making some sort of a contribution. Mm -hmm. And we can explain that to the parents. But we can't decide how much it should be or shouldn't be. We simply have to apply what the regulations say and what the formula calculates for us. And in this, are you saying that you need to be given powers to be able to distinguish or rather determine how much money is going to be granted to the parents? Do you need those powers? No, I don't believe so. I think mm. that it is, no, it is quite acceptable that we do work according to regulations. Mm. We would have certain ideas of how those regulations could be adapted. Mm -hmm. I think that the one thing that we really do struggle with is we believe that these regulations were intended to benefit the poor. Mm -hmm. In some schools we are now getting to the stage where it is beginning to benefit quite strongly even the wealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so we would like to see a change in the regulations which says if you are a wealthy person, yeah. then you should not be able to qualify. Yeah. But for the rest, we believe that those regulations are pretty fair and can be fairly easily applied and but that in right-thinking schools they are being applied that way. 
All right. Let's come back to you, Mr. Ntlebe. Being from the Basic Education uh, Department of Education, you hear Mr. Tim Gordon saying, you know, they're not given the power that they're supposed to be given as uh, uh, governing bodies, you know, the involvement that they, they would expect uh, when it comes to distribution of these funds. Uh, why is there this kind of discord when it comes to you in the Government uh, Body Foundation? I'm not sure if there is that type of a discord mm -hmm. because the Act says the school governing body has all the authority to enforce payment of fees by those parents that are liable. Mm -hmm. So when an application is put before a governing body, the governing body needs to ensure itself that the information that is provided is correct. Mm -hmm. And the calculation is based on what is available. You can get information via bank statements. Mm -hmm. You can get uh, information via other sources that when you do your calculations, you are able to determine how much this parent earns, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. is their income. And so then you're saying that the, the governing formula. bodies are the ones who are supposed to determine? They are the ones who determine that out of this income, so this is how much this parent is, is liable to But in this particular case, we've got Mr. Tim Gordon here, who's representing, you know, uh, the governing body foundation of all governing bodies, and who's saying that, you know, they are not given that power, that mandate, uh, which they would expect that they're given the power and you know they the ones who'd establish who gets what and, and and also the second issue is the fact that you know children who can or whose parents can already afford uh, the education system are also being granted this exemption I, I don't know how that is possible mm -hmm. because if you can determine how much the parent has as an income a household income it is yeah. on the basis of that that you are able to say you don't qualify or you mm. qualify mm. or you qualify on a cascading scale yeah. so that is the power that is within the the, 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 the governing body Mm -hmm. You can't grant exemption to everybody, even the wealthy, like Mr. Tim Gordon is saying. Mm -hmm. It's those I parents who can afford, who are liable to pay, and it's the responsibility of the SGB to go after those parents and ensure that they do pay. All right. Well, again, Bugeli, if you just joined us right there at home, you're still watching you. Don't go to lock right on SABC One. Today, we're touching on the issue of the fee exemption program by the base, uh, Basic Department of Education. In studio, of course, I'm joined by Mr. Uh, James Ndlebe, who's coming from the Basic Department of Education. And of course, in Cape Town, I'm joined by Mr. Tim Gordon, who's coming from the Governing Body Foundation. Of course, I'm waiting for your calls. You can call me right in studio. As you see, the number on the screen is 011 6918 and 6919. Tell me what you think. Have you heard of this program? Has it benefited you? Or are there kind of... Uh, any kind of amendments that perhaps you think uh, should be included uh, in the execution and the distribution of these funds. Go and check me on Twitter as well. My Twitter handle is at CP1Zawumbi. After the break, we'll continue with our discussion. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> You're still with us right here on SABC One. You're watching Idungla Lako. Today, we're touching on the programs, uh, the government's uh, free uh, exemption program uh, by the de uh, Department of Basic Education. Well, just remember that I said you can call me right in studio and be a part of us. Uh, the number to dial is 011-714-6918 and, of course, 6919. I'm taking your call, so I hear your side of the story. Have you heard of this program? Has it benefited you? Uh, what are the pros and cons? Perhaps you're a parent who's got a child uh, who's currently benefiting from the program. Uh, what is it that you've learned? Well, right now, I've got a caller, Mbume Songwa, who's calling me from KZN. Mbume, welcome to the show. Yebo <laughs> Because bodies, I governing bodies. We get to in the the program, your fee exemption program, you know, has the government body told you about it? All right, thank you so much, Susan Bume. It goes back to what I was saying, Mr. Ntlebe, earlier on, that this is a beautiful program, and especially in South Africa currently, where there's this huge struggle when it comes to education and access and qu uh, quality education. Uh, people are being set back uh, because of funds. They cannot afford quality schools and quality education. And here's a caller from KZN who's was saying that it's the first time hearing of this program. And on top of that, there are these huge demands. And these are government schools we're talking about, uh, where they're expected to have donations, make donations if there's going to be painting or food and all sorts of things. Why are we still having these issues if we're talking about such a beautiful program? 
program? I'm sure Sis Mpume comes from what we call our non-fee paying schools, mm -hmm. where parents are then requested to make a donation. So, so, so which ones are your non-fee paying schools? The child doesn't pay school fees at all? Nobody pays anything in those schools. Mm -hmm. If they really require something, it's a matter of, it's a voluntary contribution that you'll make as yeah. a parent. Now, I think the problem, the challenge that is brought about by System Boom is that those donations are then made compulsory. Yeah. And they are saying the school has agreed that we'll contribute so much, and then parents are then forced to do that. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is that it is illegal. But U exactly, me, in the the Amaguti, is, isn't there kind, any kind of intervention that you'd have as the department? The, 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 there is. In, in Tabo Sisimpume and the rest, Abagu uh, Manofi schools, Umabatanga Bezana and Intense Jangales, Gunabasho Lababegi were a good way. Melebatate the linking as Abobaznik as Abasho. Over any time I fagil and Jenges Pitu go to Ama results as what told. Yes, about and all the people. So uma ago in a school, a C in office school. Agmelanga a forced to go to a keep it donation because by virtue of being in that school, it means she can't afford. It means the government or your upper dollar zonki in Lagos is gone. All right. Well, you can call me right in studio. Remember, it's O double one seven one four six nine one eight and six nine one right one nine. Right now, I've got Olga who's calling me from Velcom. Well, Olga, welcome to the show. Yes, how are you today? I'm good, Mama Gunjan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, this uh, governing body here in Velcom, the people there, they really doesn't give us a chance of paying or of doing anything. They just tell us you don't have to I don't know how to put it. How's Olga? Okay. Uh -huh. Most women are like that. I just say this. I bump the application form. They tell me, "I hope you don't want to They don't have to give to me because government of South Africa, I buy for charity. Who are going to buy for the school? I buy for that charity. I for buy two zeros. I just say this. I keep on feeling everything about that. And then John, they end up buying the over this. Application mm, naka yawe kikuti aba kolo taba ise kuti loyari. I'm paying the lawyers now. Hmm hmm. Hmm. That is You can talk to us, Mrs. Olga. Mrs. Olga. Yes. Omo district yenge feng ma. Omo free state mo welcome. Ko welcome. Eh wana uye ko district official lo na yali joli pochwa ko welcome ne. Eh yanta. Ufiche mo le ukupe second manager ya lo na. Omo fe matata au. Barring got his go got district uh 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 yeah education. Can we talk to this lady? All right, okay, okay. So, so, so what we'll try to do is that we'll have uh, uh, my contact details. We'll, we'll have the contact details uh, that, that, that in Lebe or whoever is from uh, the Department of Education on our social media, and we'll try to call you and then resolve this issue. All right, Hello. thank you. So but but yes. let's give the public a, a, a response. Mm -hmm. She says she's unemployed. Yes. And then she has completed the A form, mm -hmm. which goes to the governing body. Mm. But the school is then saying, because they're not getting anything from government, they cannot give her an exemption. Yes. That, that is very illegal. It's very mm. wrong. Mm. By the fact that she's unemployed, what the governing body needs to do is to really confirm the status of her employment. Mm. And mm. if it's true, she must be giving a full exemption, total exemption. Mm. Let, and let, and I'm disappointed that the department is the not department taking is any not anything because, because those are the people who to... need to check and mm. verify if the governing body is employing the law correctly. Mm -hmm. But you can't expect money from a, per a person who says she's unemployed. Mm. Let's talk about the fee-paying schools. Uh, we've heard about the non-fee-paying -fee schools. Uh, those ones are not accept or, or expected to pay anything. But the fee-paying schools, uh, what about them? What's the criteria 
who qualifies in case I've got a child who's there I then get retrenched at work I lose my job uh, do I have to move my child to that school because I can't afford a fees isn't there maybe some kind of uh, you know a plan that could be developed for me okay the, the school fees exemption program is for those schools mm. now if you get retrenched on the day on which you get retrenched you must be in touch with your school complete that application form mm -hmm. is goes to the SGB and then the SGB must then determine. Mm -hmm. in, in fact, they need to follow up and, and, and convince themselves that indeed you are not employed. Yeah. And from that day onwards, then you then qualify for, an, for a school fees exemption. Hmm. Mr. Gordon, let's come to you in Cape Town right there. Uh, we've got uh, here, Mr. Ndlebe, we've got callers who are calling. One is from a, uh, a non-fee paying school. One is from a fee paying school who's saying that she's currently unemployed and uh, you know she's been served with notices uh, and also she fears that a child will be moved from the school. Uh, but it also seems like, uh, uh, from according to the Department of Basic Education, that as governing bodies, as SGPs, you are given the power and the mandate to be able to look at such particular or specific cases can this parent afford, uh, 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 can this parent qualify according to the criteria and the power that you're given? As much as you're saying you're not given the power, the basic uh, Department of Education says you do have the power. No, I think we must get clarity on this. The whole issue about fee exemption program mm -hmm. is that it applies only in fee paying schools. Mm -hmm. So those people who are in non fee paying schools, that they shouldn't be talking with this one because it's not this particular program that applies to them. No, no, but I'm the saying fee there exemption are fee only applies schools. where there should be fees paid. Exactly, Mr. Gordon. What now, I'm saying is that there are parents who are in fee-paying schools who get retrenched. The fees are too exorbitant and they can't afford them, but the system will kick them out automatically because they don't have the funds to pay for their children. Aren't you given the power no, as the governing bodies? You are, but there are certain cases like that. So aren't you given the power as the governing bodies to ensure that such parents, their children remain at school, even though they are unemployed? Absolutely, yes. Absolutely, yes. And any governing body that is doing its job properly will ensure that such a parent, provided they apply for it, will be granted the exemption that they are looking for. Mm -hmm. Where I say we don't have the power, we don't have the power to decide on how much exemption there should be or shouldn't. All that we have got to do is ensure that those parents are telling the truth when they say they've been retrenched mm -hmm. and then apply the rules. And if the rules say that they qualify for exemption, then they do. And the governing body must grant them that exemption. All right. There should be no reason why a child should be taken away from a school because the parent is retrenched. All right. And I they agree with James it. entirely. If the, if the governing body is not applying the law, then the parents must report that. All right. Let's hold it uh, uh, right there, Mr. Tim Gordon. Uh, we'll definitely come back to that issue because I'm sure that they're currently parents out there who are suffering, you know, who go to fee-paying schools. They can't afford their children. They can't afford to take their children to school. So definitely uh, something needs to be done about that. While I'm still taking calls right on the show, it's 011-714-6918 and of course 6919. After the break, we'll continue. Do call me and do send me those messages, especially on Facebook. I'll actually read those Facebook, the Facebook messages after this break. Do stay with me. <laughs> I said you can send me those messages right there on Facebook. Please make sure that uh, you keep those messages coming through. If you just joined us right there at home, today we're talking about the fee, the uh, Department of Education, basic education rather, fee exemption program, which benefits those who go into fee paying schools. And I said you should send me your views because I want to hear what you have to say or perhaps, uh, you know, what you think about this program. Is it accessible? Uh, does it benefit you? And all sorts of things. I've got messages that I'm expecting to be on screen. All right. Oh, there we go. I've got specifically Oscar Kupuna who says, a speech le fee exam uh, for so says fees must fall free education for all snazo snairom kwali says makancede wethu government naku preschools kuya dura man niqaphele for povlondo spiwa 600 trends and genyanga a preschool sure dinyiko makondo says due to unemployment parents 
um, oh, parents, our dreams are blocked. Okay, so due to unemployment of parents, their dreams are blocked. Remember that I said you can also send me some stuff on, 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 on Twitter. Uh, you can go and tweet me right there. My Twitter handle is at on Zaun. But of course, you can hashtag Ilunga Lako and the subject we're dealing with today, and that is uh, the government's fee exemption program. And uh, I've got a caller. I've got Wendy who's calling me from Velcom. Wendy, welcome to the show. Okay, thank you, Fred. And the phone and the paper will go on my problem. I'm dying for my letter exemption. They call Lisa, they pin this school in a fail due to a pay slip. The vital answer seven, but still is a fail of a pay slip. They produce everything, but yeah, fail a exemption. The battle is called since grade um, grade seven till grade eight. Uh, from standard six to standard eight, the penalty is seven. So when we go, the the reporter is calling and we answer seven. The apply the exemption still under the money exemption. Last time the woman for for three times. The last time when can the woman till now this year and the woman ang. How you score in the batting? Especially the governing party is this. The batting is the governing party. The batting is the one to answer. Is calling is Durai or Sias buses are fought. Wow. So the area the Department of Education. That report, I have a paper go. Then I appeal. We should be a plum fountain. One for Nella, we should be a plum fountain. We should come. I'm promising nothing. God, this is a joke. I keep saying till today. I can't be content. The guy is all on for me. I let a final notice. The battle is my last call. So, but the final notice, but if our battle is my last call, we should win. And you'll be blacklisted. Okay. Thank you yes. so much, Sis Wendy. Uh, Mr. Ntlebe, let's come to you. you know, there's just no denying the fact that mm -hmm. education, especially quality education in South Africa, is quite a big deal. And it's not just a big deal, it's too expensive. Mm -hmm. uh, people can't afford. Uh, we currently, I mean, we had huge uproars uh, uh, in society. We had Fees Must Follow, which was a huge campaign. And, and, and it also involved, uh, you know, students or rather learners who are going to your high schools in the best basic education department. If then as the department you're exposed to these issues why do you keep on exempting children who go to schools your so-called former multiracial schools which are fee-paying schools as opposed to taking these funds and then distributing them to non-fee-paying schools why find the child who's currently going to a school that has a parent who can already afford a certain level of education as opposed to taking the fees to those who really can't afford yeah it's, it's a simple answer when we ask schools to decide whether they want to be a fee-paying school or mm. a non-fee-paying school, mm. it means the governing body will have consulted with the parent, the community. Yeah. And the community will have decided that they are able to fund their own education mm. and then they become a fee-paying school. Mm -hmm. Such schools do not get as much money as a non-fee-paying school which means the government contribute very little to those schools. You'll probably call them former modesty schools. Mm. So the money that comes from government, it, 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 it's, it, it's very little. But those that are non-fee-paying school, then the government funds everything that happens in that but institution. But clearly it's not so enough, Mr. Ntlebe. Yes, clearly it's not enough. M my question is, why fund a child who's going to uh, a St. What What school and, and the parent is already maybe, you know, belongs in the middle class or can afford a certain level of education? Why not fund a child who goes to a school where they will even be required to pay for their own food, they can afford their own textbooks, they can afford basic resources? As the government, why not spin it around and fund a child who goes to a school they can afford? We, we're doing exactly that mm. because those parents who take children to, for, to, to uh, your fee-paying schools mm -hmm. are actually buying their own textbooks. They are actually buying everything for themselves. Mm -hmm. So the little money that the government contribute to them is to assist them in terms of rates and taxes. And I'm saying it's also not enough. So mm -hmm. there isn't much funding that goes into the fee-paying schools. Mm. A lot of money is directed to the non-fee-paying schools. Oh. And as we speak now, there are about 78% of our schools that are non-fee-paying schools. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's about the remainder of the percentage the way parents are contributing themselves. Mr. Gordon, let's come to you as well. You know, as, as the SGBs, you're also not as, you know, as honest, I would say, when it comes to this program of the distribution of these funds. Here's the basic dis uh, department of education still maintaining the fact that you do have powers when it comes to distribution of, this power, uh, of these funds. On the other side, you're saying it's not up to you. When this fund, take me through the process, when as a parent who cannot afford, clearly who needs exemption when it comes to these funds, when I'm given the form, what is the first thing that I should do? How do you first determine? Because you 
said, you, you are the ones who check if I can afford. You are the ones who have to check if the information that I've provided is truthful. And so what do you check and, and, and what's the process of, che of checking? I'm still unclear when it comes to that. No, it is fairly straightforward. If a parent believes that they cannot afford the school fees, then they are asked to make an application which means filling in a form. And that form says, I am not employed, or I am employed but I only earn 3,000 rand a month, mm. or I am employed but I earn 5,000, or I am employed and I earn 20,000. Yeah. They will then be asked, please prove that, give us a salary slip or give us a bank statement or something, mm. just so that we can check to see that you are telling the truth. Yeah. If you are telling the truth, we have no further right to decide on the amount. We have simply got to apply the regulations. Mm -hmm. And if that regulation says you have got to get 60% exemption, mm -hmm. then the governing body must grant 60% exemption, and the parent is told you only have to pay 40%. So the regulations but are coming from be... the Department of Basic Education, you say? That's correct, yes. Okay. And earlier on you said you'd like to be involved in the process and, and the implementation, or rather the drafting of these regulations. What kind of changes would you uh, particularly like to see? I think the only change that we would really like to see is remembering that these regulations were drawn up approximately 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Now, a person who was earning an amount of 20,000 rand 15 years ago was very wealthy. Mm -hmm. A person who is earning that now is m much more middle class. So you've got changes. If you look at a thing like taxation, taxation moves with the years. And with the inflation this rate as well. This regulation mm. hasn't mm. with the inflation rate. So that what you are getting now in the wealthiest schools, a family which is earning a million rand per annum can get a partial exemption. Mm -hmm. Now we believe these, just as you were saying earlier, the money should not be benefiting those parents who are who earning a million afford. rand or three quarters mm -hmm. of a million rand who can already afford it. So all that we would like to see is we would like to see a cap where they say if you are earning let's say more than 500,000 a year mm. or more than 400,000 a year or more than 600,000 a year, then you will not uh, qualify for an exemption. Mm. But for the rest we believe that the regulations are fair and that in most of our schools, in most of our governing bodies, they are being correctly applied. All right. All if right. somebody is doing something wrong, then they must be reported and then they must be followed up. All right. I think that's exactly what we need to talk about, Mr. Gordon. The accountability of those SGBs that do not comply or that here uh, to the rules that are set for them. Well, remember, I'm still taking your calls right here on the show. The number is 011 After this break, we'll continue with our discussion. Stay with us. Don't go anywhere. We're still tackling the issue of a fee exemption program by the uh, Department of Basic Education. We're not talking about high education as yet. This still this just applies to high schools and primary schools. And I see a lot of people asking, why doesn't it apply to preschools as well? Well, I'm checking those messages. Please make sure that you send me those messages on Facebook as well, uh, so that I'll be able to read them. Well, Songa, so Adonis is already up there, and he's saying government can introduce such things, but it's so useless uh, to most South Africans if uh, they can't access such service, especially to rural areas. Introduce, inform, and provide to all people, not just introduce and uh, expect uh, parents to know without being informed. Especially, Oscar Kupuna says, does speech let uh, fee exemption program in us, the fee exemption program in us, okay, we've seen that. Uh, let's go to Ndumi uh, Song Goje says, uh, this must come to an end because our dreams are being blocked. Uh, Zandi Lengasa says, bra speech, my question is, when last year in October, uh, it was announced that 0% fee increment uh, for the students. Uh, what were they saying exactly? Because 
We see protests still continue this year, and that's Zandila who's in Montreal. Well, I think we need to clarify the fact that, you know, this fee exemption program is talking about basic education, not higher education. Maybe in the future we'll have uh, the fee exemption program for the higher education department as well. But for today, we're still talking about the basic education, and not just any school, but the fee-paying schools. Program. Uh, right now, let's go and, and hear from uh, Zamangiti, who's calling us from uh, Fosloras. Zamangiti, welcome to the show. Hello, how are you? I'm good. Good job, Sisi. Yeah, Bill. Mm. So, Mina, I'm calling concerning, I'm a student at Jameson College, ne? Mm -hmm. Yes. So, I applied to Ipazar last block. So, this block, I'm going to Ipazar, I'm going to Ipazar. Okay. Then, I'm going to block the system. So I ask his colleague to sing, sing and block, okay, bang and block. But bang, you uh, know, that amount, and then apply to the Ipazari from last block. So then, if you want to say, I say, Ipazari, I call you a coca or I call Chile or whatever. Okay, Zama, which school are you happy? Are you happy? I'm going to say, EWC, Ekurulani West College. Oh, so you are, is it university? No, it's a college. It's a college. So which grade are you in? I'm doing N5. Oh, block. so you're basically improving on certain subjects. Okay, this program basically, uh, uh, the fee exemption program, is for public, government public schools, isn't it? So if, oh, if you're okay. in grade 10 or so, uh, or so forth, but the basic grades and the basic department of education, and not just any school, but, you know, those schools where parents are required, like yourself, uh, to pay fees. Maybe in future, uh -oh. uh, when the government finally decides maybe there's a new program that will, you know, uh, benefit people of your kind, then we'll bring that on the show. Okay, thank okay, you. Okay, thank you so much, Zama. Well, l let's go to the question. Maybe before I go to Mr. Gordon, uh, there's this huge gap, and also there's this, you know, this glaring uh, 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 possibility that some government bodies might not be, you know, adhering to the rules that you provide as the uh, basic department of education. What kind of recourse then is there for the parent who has been subjected? I mean, earlier on, we had Uwendi was saying that uh, she was told that umsa uh, pumduana guskolanga safoti, which is not right. It is quite unfortunate. The, the, the recourse that we have is that there are departmental offices in every area. We call them district mm. offices. And that is where this information is to be taken to. And in case that doesn't work, it needs to be taken to the provincial office. Each province has a provincial office where these issues need to be taken to. And parents can also contact the toll-free number of the Department of Basic, Basic Education, either via any social media, Twitter, mm, whatever. Mm. We will be able to respond to that. My only disappointment is when I hear parents that have said, we have gone to the department. And, and the department we, we said, it not is your assisted. government. And these are things that we, we, we would like to take up and we, with those uh, departments. Mm -hmm. All uh, right. Another thing that I picked up from your messages, yes. from, from uh, the viewers' messages, is that generally they are saying this information is not available in it rural schools. It is not schools. available. People but, but, don't know but about But rural it. schools do not have to apply for school exemptions mm. because their schools are no-fee schools. Mm. So they are not expected to pay. So probably that's why they don't even know because they don't have to apply for anything. It goes back to the question I asked earlier and it goes back to the question that some people are asking as well that why fund those who can already afford mm. the system mm. though? Why mm. fund people who can afford education? L let, let's clarify something. When we say school fees exemption. Mm. We're saying these are schools where parents fund the education of their children. Mm. But there are those parents who can't because afford. Because they want quality education. Because whatever reason they mm -hmm. have, but they can afford. Yes. Now, there are those parents who may find themselves in the midst of those affording mm. parents. Mm. That they know that this exemption fee is protecting those. Those who find themselves in the midst of parents who are able. All right. We're protecting those by saying apply so that the school can exempt you okay. from pay. It doesn't mean government is then funding, but we're saying a parent that can afford fee should not be expected to pay. Okay, Mr. Gardens, what do you have to say? Here's uh, Mr. Ntlebe right here saying that, you know, they are not funding people because they are just funding them, but they are funding people because they want to pay for their education. And earlier on you said these are people who can already afford their education. Why then, why then uh, should they be funded? Because they are citizens of this country, they belong in the state system. But I think that it's important to realise the very big difference in the funding. For instance, a learner in a township 
is funded six times more than a learner in, let's say, a suburb. Mm. So that if you are part of the poorer group, you are funded six times more than the slightly wealthier ones. Mm. The really wealthy ones, the ones that can absolutely afford it, they go but to the independent schools That's and the government doesn't... Saying. No, they're not being funded. The independent schools are not funded at all by the state. But their children are taken to public schools and whose parents can afford the education. That's what I'm saying. Then why? Especially because I wanted to bring to you the issue of uh, ensuring that, you know, uh, uh, these government bodies are adhering to the, the rules that have been set, you know, especially to the criteria that's been set to make sure that certain parents are granted the fees. What about those governing bodies? Because you can't run away from the reality that there are certain SGBs that disqualify certain people based on their certain ruling. That is not necessarily yours. What kind of measures or what kind of recourse can I get as a parent was been subjected to that I think James answered that very correctly you need to go then to the district office or the head office of the education department in in the province you see it's the same with any other rule I mean there are rules that you may not steal but some people steal and then they must bear the wrath of the law there are some people who exceed the speed limit where they're not allowed to, and then they must be taken to law. Mm. And if there are some governing bodies who are breaking the rules on fee exemptions, mm. then they must be reported to the education department so that they can be followed up. Mm. Mm. Let, let, we would certainly not just, defend just a school that does that. Let, let, let's quickly go for, uh, for, for an air break, uh, Mr. Gordons. I'm still interested. I want to know from you, and also from you, Mr. Ntlebe, when you're talking about funding, what exactly do you fund? Because there seems to be, you know, this misunderstanding from my side and from your side, definitely, because you know the system. What do you fund? What else? What do you leave out? Because you said these kids can afford their own textbooks. But what do you fund then? Well, you're still watching you don't go to Laco right here on SAP Suwan. I'm taking your calls. Uh, just quickly, before we close the show, you can still call me. You still have the chance. The number is 011 The lines are closed. Well, you can still send me the messages on Twitter and also on Facebook. Make sure that you're part of our discussion. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us. You still need to go right here on SABC One. Well, because of time, let's come to you, Mr. Gordon's right here in Cape Town. Uh, what are your closing comments in our debate now that we've heard about this program and your role as the school governing bodies? Uh, what then are you saying to South Africans who are currently listening? Just in a few seconds because of time. What we are saying is that the fee exemption system is in place. If you need assistance, speak to the governing body and apply for it. Mm. And if that governing body is doing what the law requires it to do, you will be granted a fee exemption. All right. If you aren't, report it and make sure that those governing bodies that okay. are not doing what the law requires of them can be followed up. Report it to the uh, Department of Basic, Basic Education. Thank you so much, yes. Mr. Gordon, right there in Cape Town. Uh, let's come to you, Mr. Entler. The closing comments. What are you saying is the department to, 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 My to parents? My closing there? comment is that parents must participate on the onset, from the onset when it comes to the determining of school fees mm -hmm. because they, they have the power to determine how much the school fees is going to be. That normally happens around September every mm -hmm. year mm -hmm. in every school. Yeah. And then after that, they can, if they are unable to pay fees, All apply. Right. All right. Don't take it for granted that they'll be granted. But they can still come and advice. report to you if maybe they're not given that exemption. We, 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 we're giving them that invitation. All we right. have to know about it. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for joining us. Well, that was Mr. Gordon in Cape Town. And, of course, Mr. Entlebo is joining us right here in our Cape Town studio, uh, in our Johannesburg studios. Thank you so much to you as well right there at home for joining our discussion once again today. You can still call us, uh, or rather not call us, but email us. Uh, send us emails to consumer at sabc.co.za. Make sure that you can also send us your suggestions, whatever you'd like to see us discuss right here in the show. If not, you can call those numbers as you see them on the screen. Well, don't forget to catch our repeats right here on the show every Monday, 12 p.m. right here on SABC One. From me, Sipio Ganza Wumbi, and the rest of the team right here in Johannesburg, to you right there at home. It's goodbye, and God bless you. Hey, hey, hey.